creating a cinematic camera fade in Unity. Now that we have our initial screen overlay, as well as the ability to choose its color, it's time to begin creating the actual fade effect that we'll be using as our screen transition. With our code editor open, let's begin adding the additional code elements that we'll need to actually fade out our screen overlay. To do this, we'll first need to create three additional variables. The first variable we'll create will be a public float variable that we'll call fade time. The second variable will be a private float variable that we'll call current time. And for our third and final variable, we'll create a private color variable that we'll call color lerp. Going forward, to make this tutorial easier to follow, we'll be referring to our variables by the name we've assigned them in the demo. That being said, within the update method, type current time plus equals time dot delta time and end that line of code with a semicolon. For those that aren't familiar with working with delta time, in Unity, delta time represents the time in seconds between the current and previous frame. Some of you may be wondering why we place this line of code in the update method rather than the onGUI method. Something to note is you should never rely on time.delta time from inside onGUI method. The reason for this is, unlike the update method, the onGUI method can be called multiple times per frame, so the delta time would hold the same value for each call until next frame, where it would be updated again. For our next step, we'll use the color linear interpolation to adjust the alpha of our screen overlay. To do this, type color lerp equals color dot lerp. For those of you unfamiliar with working with lerp, lerp or linear interpolation is a way for finding a value that is some percentage between two given values. In Unity, there are several lerp functions that can be used for different classes. Next, type parentheses, and within the parentheses, type fade color, comma color, dot clear, comma current time, and end this line of code with a semicolon outside of these parentheses. At this point, our fade effect is fully functional. However, if we were to go into Unity and test it, we wouldn't be able to see its effect. The reason for this is our screen overlay color is set to our fade color. In order to see our fade effect, we simply need to change our overlay to use our lerp color instead of our fade color. To do this, with the onGUI method, change the GUI.color equals fade color to GUI.color equals color lerp. At this point, our fade effect should be visible and fully functional. However, our overlay will be white since we've removed the line of code that allows us to choose the color. Playing this functionality back in and still allow our screen overlay to fade out is fairly simple. Within the start method, type color lerp equals fade color. At this point, we're ready to test our script in Unity. After saving your script, open Unity and hit play. At this point, your camera fade effect should be fully functional. However, at this point, our fade effect is extremely quick, so much so that if we were to use it as it is now, it would serve us as more of a distraction rather than a benefit to our game or project. By opening the debug menu in our inspector, we can fully see the private current time variable and at what point our screen overlay is completely faded out. In our next lesson, we'll add the ability to choose and alter the speed of our fade. So be sure to join us in the next lesson where we'll continue developing our fade script. 
Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And be sure to join us in the next video.